Hey everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training here, bringing you another everyday office video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you one version of being able to highlight a line chart dynamically. So as you can see on my screen right here, I have a start date of the full set of data set at 129 2017 and an end date set at 64 of 2017. And you can see that I have a darker line as well as some banding that falls directly below those lines that uh, highlights what part of the bar or what part of the line we're talking about. On top of that, I've gone in and I've added data labels specifically just to just the endpoints here at the beginning and at the end. And the beautiful part about this is because I've got this set up with functions, you can see here that as I use the drop down menus and I select different parts of my data set, that the two data labels for the beginning and the end dynamically change as well as the banding underneath the line as well as the highlight of the line itself. So that's what I'm going to display in this tutorial, how to add a dynamic line on top of a line, dynamic labels at the beginning and the end, and a dynamic banding directly below this to help highlight what part of the data set you're talking about specifically. So as you can see here, I'm going back to the sort of default version of things. I have a start date and an end date specified down here. I'm just using simple data validation to specify what the start date and the end date are going to be. And you can see that I've gone ahead and used some conditional formatting to help us see where that band is going to fall, but I have not yet added the dynamic line, the dynamic labels, and the dynamic banding to this bar chart. In all three of those instances, all we're really using here is a logic function. Here are the logic functions I'm going to use. The first logic function says, if the dates over here on the left fall between the start date and the end date, then we will highlight those. And if they don't, we won't highlight them. The second, if they use that same categorization, if they fall between those two dates, then they should also make a band directly below the line chart as well. And thirdly, if the value is actually the start date or is actually the end date, we'll also go ahead and put a label at that point telling you how many tickets were open on that date. So let's see how you do that. I'm going to create two new columns. The first column is going to be highlight values and the second column is going to be labels and I'm just going to go ahead and stretch these out a little bit so it's easier to see and I'll also format paint them so that it looks like the stuff to the left. So if I want the values over here on the left to fall between the start date and the end date that is going to be an AND statement is the value for the date greater than the start date and less than the end date. So I go to cell C5 here, I go to the formulas tab at the top of the screen and under the logical drop down menu I'm going to use the if function together with the and function. We'll start with if. If one thing is true then we'll do one thing and if it's false we'll do a different thing. But the logical test here, as I said, is two separate criteria. It has to be greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date. So here I start off by putting into the logical test box the AND function. And if I want to use the full power of Excel to help me figure out how to use this, I'll click on the word AND up here at the top of the screen. So what are my two logical tests? And I could have more logical tests here, but this is the only thing I'm interested in. Well, the first logical test is that the date in cell A5, it has to be greater than or equal to the start date. That means either it is the start date or it is after the start date. Now the start date is just in a single cell down here, so I'll use my F4 keyboard shortcut to make K26 into dollar sign K dollar sign 26. And then for the second entry 
I have that same date in cell A5, it has to be less than or equal to, meaning before or on the end date, which for me is in K27. So then I use the F4 keyboard shortcut and I lock it down. And you can see here that it's telling me that the date in question, 1-1-2017, is not after 2 12 of 2017. False. So I know it's doing its job correctly. Now I'll go back to the if statement and click on the word if up in the formula bar to fill out what it, do, what it should do if it's true and what it should do if it's false. Now if it's true, then that means it's a date that should be highlighted. So all we're going to do here in the value of true is output the real number value, 127 tickets in this case. But this is where it gets a little bit interesting. It seems like in order to highlight this, we could either put the number of tickets to highlight it or the number zero to not highlight it. But unfortunately, if you were to do that in a line chart, the line chart would just go down to zero and there would be a heavy line down at the zero level to make that happen. So instead, we're going to use the function NA. NA open parentheses, close parentheses, in the false box right there. What it'll do is, if this thing is false, it will output an error message that will not be charted. That's the important part. By outputting NA, you're saying this part should not even be on the chart at all. It does not qualify as being something that needs to be highlighted. So we click OK, and we go and autofill that down, and you can see here that it clearly highlights just the entries that fall between the two dates, and everything else gives me an NA error message. So let's see this in action. First, I'm going to click the line over here on the right-hand side, go up to the Format tab, and tell it to format the selection. And I'm going to take the line and I'm going to make it a little paler. So I'll use the little drop down menu here and let's go with a nice soft blue color, something like that, so that it's not the focal point. Now it's time to bring in a nice dark blue or, you know, whatever color I want. I'm going to click on the selections here for the highlight values, all the cells that need to be highlighted. And I'm going to copy them using Control C on my keyboard, click on the chart here and use Control v to paste them. And you can see already it's uh, going ahead and putting that dark line on top of the lighter line. Let's make it really clear. I'm gonna click on the darker line and really make it dark, something like that. Okay, so that's a nice dark line. Now, that could be enough, but I'm going to go two layers deeper than this. The first layer is going to be kind of weird. I'm going to click on the chart and literally just paste the same values again. So control V to paste it in there again. And you can see the line kind of lightens up. That's because there are now, there's now another series here. Let's take a look at that. I'll go up here to the format tab up here at the top of the screen. And on the drop down menu for the current selection, you'll see there's a series called the number of tickets. And then there are two series called highlight values. So that's kind of weird, right? Here's what we're going to use this for. I go over here to the design tab and I go to change chart type. Now by default, it says, oh, all these things are just lines, right? No big deal. But I'm going to go down here on the left-hand side to combo. And you can see here that I can combine different types of charts together, lines, columns, whatever. So the number of tickets is still going to be a line chart, just like it was before. And the highlight values, the first highlight values is, again, also a line chart just like before. But then the second one that I brought in, hit the drop down menu and make it an area chart. And that's the key right there. You see that? We have a normal line, we have a highlighted line, and then we have the area under the highlighted line. I'll click OK. And then just take a second here and maybe click on the little area underneath here and uh, maybe fill it. You know what? I'll fill it with a gradient, really make it look snazzy, right? There we go. So maybe, maybe a little dark underneath the line itself, something like that. And over here, go to a little bit lighter color like that. Okay, great. And there it is. You have your normal line, you have your dark line, and you have your area underneath the line. 
we're almost there. Now comes the time for the dynamic labeling. Now it's up to you what you want to label. Maybe you want to label the maximum value within this range. You can make that happen. But I'm going to decide to label either the beginning part or the ending part. So I need a logic function that will either do the first entry or the last entry. And that, of course, is the OR function. So we'll go in here under Labels. Again, use the Formulas drop-down menu and use a logical formula. We're going to use an IF with an OR nested inside of it. Okay, so IF. And then inside the logical test, just like before we used an AND, here we're going to use the OR function with an open parentheses. And now here are the possible qualifications for things that I want to label. I click on the OR right up here at the top, and the first test is, is this value for the date equal to the start? So is cell A5 equal to cell K26? And again, remember from before, we use the F4 key on the keyboard to lock that down. So that's one possibility for something I'd like to label. Here's another possibility, logical two. Is cell A5 equal to the ending result, K27? Press F4, there it is. And there we go. We've got the label for the start. We've got the label for the end. Let's go back to the if statement right up here and click in the formula bar and say, what do we do if it's true? If it's true, just like before, we output the 127. And if it's false, just like before, we use the NA function to output an error in the event that it's not something we want to highlight. I click OK and autofill that down. And again, you look at this and you see that the only two entries that are going to be labeled are the first entry and the last entry in that chart. And you know what I'm about to do here. I'm about to highlight all these values, copy them using Control C on the keyboard, click on the chart, and use Control V on the keyboard. Now, the problem with this is because it's two specific individual elements, it's very difficult to click on this thing. So instead, what I'm going to do is go back to the Format tab right up here at the top, and on the drop-down menu, say that I want to format the labels. So I click on Labels, and you can see here that just like you see that little point right there, that's the only thing that gets highlighted. All right, so over here on the formatting options, and if you don't see the formatting options, just click on Format Selection right here under Series Labels. I'm going to go in and do the markers. So the markers, let's see, the marker options. I'm going to do a built-in marker option, maybe a nice round dot, for example. Now, the fill of this, I want to be maybe, let's go with white on the fill. And then on the border, let's do a nice thick blue, dark blue border around the outside. So there's a one point dark blue border and you can see that right there, beginning point, end point, right there and right there. Now on top of that, I can then add data labels, right? I can go to my design tab, go to add chart element and add some data labels, maybe above like that. And there it is, my data label for the beginning my data label for the ending. I can click on those data labels. I can increase the font size a little bit, maybe make them bolded. Maybe I'll go to fill and I'll fill them with white. Yeah, that'll be good. And maybe I'll go to my drop shadow and maybe I'll put a drop shadow behind these things. Maybe a like a pale blue drop shadow. Sure, why not, right? This is just aesthetic choices at this point. But you see what that does for us right there? Look at that chart as it stands. We had the original line. Now we have the line overlaying the original line, highlighting a specific element. Underneath that, we have a band that highlights the segment that we're interested in. We have a point at the beginning, a point at the end, and they both have their little dynamic labels on them. And now if I say start on, let's say, March 12th, you can see it change and end on, let's say, October 1st, and you can watch it change. Now, the end of this, if you'd need to, is to turn off the visibility on the columns that do all this heavy lifting. So I'm going to click on my chart here, 
go to my design tab at the top of the screen and under the button for select data you'll notice that there is an option in this dialog box for hidden and empty cells I click on hidden and empty cells and say show the data in hidden rows and columns now why did I do that it's because I'm about to hide the C and D columns and when I do that Excel is going to assume that I don't want to see it in the chart anymore except if I click this checkbox right here yes I do actually want that to be part of the chart it's just all this cool effect that I'm going for and then I hit OK and I hit OK and now I can easily go to the C column and the D column, these columns that I use to dynamically highlight the values. I can right click and hide those. And now as I dynamically choose whatever starting point and whatever ending point I want, I can see that those labels and the highlights go with it.